picks. So need your favorite DFS plays at the following positions for tonight's nine-game NBA slate. Who will you be building around at center, Jules? Well, we'll get around to talking other positions and talking value on this slate, which it seems like there's plenty of. So you got to spend somewhere, and I will spend on the most expensive player on the slate, that being Nikola Jokic, for 1200 bucks against the Washington Wizards. Wizards ranked 29th in DraftKings points allowed to the position. Um, you look at Jokic's game log, he's coming off 75, 63, 72 DraftKings points in pretty solid matchups over the last three games. Uh, I think you got to just pay for points somewhere, and Jokic is going to be the safest place, I guess, for me to buy those points. All right, you agree there, Matt? Yeah, I basically agree with the sentiment. I do think if you're looking for a pivot in GPPs, just playing Embiid instead of Jokic could make sense. Um, Jokic is likely to be more popular. I think he's deserving of that, but he is also $1,000 more expensive. And the key for Embiid is without Steven Adams, I think we could see the Grizzlies interior defense struggle. Um, I still think Jokic most likely outscores Embiid by enough to justify that price tag. But if we do see Jokic wind up being a lot more popular and Embiid is a lot more contrarian, because I don't think there's going to be enough value to fit both guys. Um, I think just swapping over to Embiid is a good move. But either way, I think playing one of these guys, if value opens up at other positions, that's the way to go. All right. So who's a forward worth building your lineup around tonight, Matt? So in this Charlotte Hornets team, we have Terry Rozier coming back and we've kind of had all this forward value with the rest of this team while everyone's been out for COVID protocols. Um, one, these guys have gotten a little more expensive like Ubre, Bridges, Cody Martin, but also with Rozier back, they're not going to be asked to do as much. Um, but this Hornets team without basically any centers is just going to go small ball the whole game. So the matchup for Kristaps Porzingis could not be any better. He's at 8K, which I think normally would be about fair, but there's no Luka Doncic playing. So I think Porzingis should be able to take advantage of this spot, and it should be a really high-paced game just with the way the Hornets are playing. And Rogier coming back, I think, just adds even more to that. He's another guy who's going to help with a small ball lineup, doesn't play that much defense. He's going to score really well, and it just makes for an even higher scoring game. Um, so I think it's a really good spot for Porzingis. All right, Jules, how about you, man? Yeah, it's hard to find a place really other than Porzingis to spend at forward. You keep scrolling through looking for a name, and it's kind of a tough slate. Like, you go to the Celtics side of things, you got Jalen Brown coming back into the mix, which makes it tougher for him and Tatum against a, a solid Bucks team to find value. Um, Matt hit on the situation with, with the Hornets getting bodies back, which generally means guys are overpriced. So, really, it's Porzingis – uh, and or value for for me so you've got I mean Brandon Boston is probably a guy we'll touch on in in value he somehow remains 3k with Paul George still out of the lineup and then Marvin Bagley kind of back from the dead at 3800 with no Rashawn Holmes I, I'm not a huge Marvin Bagley guy but the, the minutes are there um, so once I get uh, you know Porzingis at a really fair price into my lineup it, it's all value for me there's really no other other building block or star to build around there in my mind hey Bagley got his first start of the season right Saturday against Cleveland I'm looking here last four games averaging 11 and a half points eight and a half boards he's posted a couple double doubles uh what about in the guard department who's got building block potential Julian uh we're sticking with the Mavericks and it's Jalen Brunson whether you're going to play him with or without Chris Stapp's Porzingis uh, five games this season without Doncic on the floor. 17.8 points, 7.6 assists, 5.8 rebounds for Jalen Brunson. Um, he just takes over that that ball handling role for the Mavericks and does pretty well with it. Uh, so against Charlotte, uh, at home, pretty decent matchup, but it's really just the, the volume. And with him priced in just kind of a mid-tier, high 5,000s, uh, it, it – couldn't be a better spot to, to roster Jalen Brunson, even with Chris Stapps Porzingis. Yeah, and seven starts this season. He's averaging more than 20 points a night. Matt, what guard do you like? Yeah, so Brunson could be like 70, 80, even 90% tonight. Um, and I still think you just do it because 5,800 is just not close to what he should cost with Luka not playing, and especially in a good matchup against Charlotte. Like Brunson's probably a $7,500 or more player without Luka on the team. And then you get a positive matchup and he's only 58. So I think you just play Brunson and worry about differentiating elsewhere. But I, I will just say, I think there's a chance that Steph Curry doesn't play tonight. I don't necessarily believe Steve Kerr when he says Steph will be out there. Um, they're playing tomorrow against the Knicks and three point record and all of that. I think everyone knows the narratives, but Jordan Poole's 5,900. And if Steph doesn't play, I think Poole being right at the same price as Brunson 
probably doesn't get that much attention. So I like pool two if Steph doesn't play. All right, so I think both of you guys have mentioned multiple times already the amount of value on this slate, this nine-game NBA slate tonight, the 13th day of December of the year 2021. So if I ask you, can you build around someone who has value on this slate? Matt, you would say what? So DeAndre Ayton is questionable, and I don't know if we'll get that news in time to make a reaction before lock. And the Suns and Clippers also play at 1030, which is a total island game. Um, this actually happened the other night. McGee was $3,400 as DeAndre Ayton's backup and put up nearly 50 fantasy points with only a 14% ownership number in the largest tournament because no one had the ability to swap to him. So you really needed to plan ahead if you wanted to play McGee. Um, fortunately, we have guys like Brandon Boston, who Julian mentioned before, um, where if you put McGee in the utility spot, you can just take him instead if Ayton's in. Um, but I, McGee at $4,000, like if Ayton's not there, I think he's a better value than even Brunson. So uh, we don't know that news yet. We may not know it until well after lock, but I think JaVel McGee potentially winds up being the best value play on the slate. Jules, hook me up here, dude. Yeah, Matt Matt hit on it. Um, when you have the ability, you know, we can talk about the values, whatever. Brandon Boston, Jalen Brunson, Marvin Bagley, um, they're great. But what makes them better than, you know, an 80, 90% Jalen Brunson is having a 14% JaVale McGee. So, yeah, you want to keep your utility open to react to news tonight is the best value that you can you can possibly get. Um, Timothy Luau Kabarit is another guy, TLC on Atlanta, a name you can throw out there. Um, but we've touched on a lot. Here, I'll give you a value to fade. Ooh. Xavier Tillman is a guy that's been doing really well, but he's getting limited minutes, and his matchup is going to be Joel Embiid. He could be off the floor in foul trouble, four minutes into the game and you've got a guy you think is going to go 8x and uh he winds up getting like 12 DraftKings points against mb all right excellent thank you for doing that way to go above and beyond jules this is why yeah extra credit dude this is I'm why that we guy. love you yeah that's absolutely right our producer is loving you for that uh let's wrap things up though uh let's go to the dk sports book jules what's your favorite bet on the dk sports book tonight yeah it's a weird card it's again going to be a lot of like what ifs um why are the Warriors such short favorites coming off a loss in Indy? Well, maybe maybe Matt's right. Maybe Curry is sitting. If Curry plays and you can get the Warriors minus three and a half, I guess it's a little bit of a trappy spot off a loss in the sandwich game coming to New York, and Curry probably breaks the record in New York. But I'll be interested if Curry's in. Um, you got the Celtics coming home after a long road trip and uh, Jalen Brown coming back. For me, it's really it's going to be the late game again. If Aiton plays... Then we don't get the JaVale McGee value, but I do very much want the Suns minus three against the Clippers, who should be without Paul George. Um, so that is the, again, a lot of moving parts here. The spot that I've circled is Suns minus three with George out and Aiton in. We'll see if it comes to fruition. All right, Matty, how about you, dude? Yeah, I think Julian would probably be able to make this pick for me because he knows where I'm going to go, but I, I like the Pacers regardless. Like, I think that even if Steph plays... The Warriors are just not as good as they play this year. I've probably said this on like every segment and every show I've been on for the last two months. I think the Warriors are a top five team in the NBA, but just barely. And I think the Pacers are one of the more undervalued teams. They've had some ups and downs, but I think people are buying too much into this idea. They're going to blow up the roster, make trades, whatever. Like it's actually a talented team. And I think they're a low end playoff team. The Warriors are in the midst of this road trip. And I do think that matters also. And with Steph in, I still think this is pretty close to a 50, 50 game. Um, so I would be happy to take plus three and a half or plus four because it probably does bump up a little if Steph does wind up being in. Um, but if Steph's out, like this is one of the best bets of the season because in that scenario, if you can get the Pacers at plus three with no Curry, okay. I think they deserve to be five point favorites, if not more, if Curry's out of this game. So yeah. this could be a wild one for Indiana. Like they've let me down many, many times in spots where they are where they should win, like playing the Lakers when they're shorthanded, things like that. But uh, if you take Curry out of this game, like I think the Pacers win easily.